Daddy, will you be mummy now? The words bored into Jack like a dagger into his heart. He looked down at Melissa and Sophie, his five-year-old twins lying in their beds. What do you mean? Now mummy's gone, we want you to be mummy because we miss her. Jack felt tears welling up inside him. It was only four weeks since he'd taken the call to say that Pippa, his beloved wife of seven years, had collapsed and died suddenly while at work. He tried to hide his grief from the girls but now the pain felt as raw as ever. He thought that the girls were coping but it was now apparent that the healing process for them would take a lot longer than it had first seemed. I can try to do all of the things mummy used to do but no one can take the place of mummy as she was so special. But you're special too so you can be mummy, came the reply. Thank you but mummy was a beautiful woman. I'm a man so I can't be mummy. Can't you be a girl sometimes? I'm sorry, Jack replied nature doesn't work like that. Daddies can't be mummies and mummies can't be daddies and we can't really choose what we want to be. Jack knew that the transgender lobby would have been aghast at his last comment but, with all that had happened to them, a lecture on freedom of expression of gender was the last thing they needed. He kissed each of the girls goodnight in turn and, after turning off the main light leaving just the glow of their night light, left the room. Jack and Pippa had been childhood sweethearts, little older than Melissa and Sophie when they first played together at school. Physically, they bore a striking similarity to each other and were often mistaken for twins. They were fifteen when they had their first proper kiss at a friend's party and since then neither had ever looked at anyone else. Engaged at eighteen, married at twenty and parents at twenty-two, their life had seemed idyllic but now, at just twenty-seven, Jack was on his own again without the soulmate who'd been a constant companion for almost his whole life. Jack glanced at their wedding photograph on the mantelpiece. Whilst he could see some similarities between himself and Pippa's same height, same build, same colored hair, she had an easy beauty and he'd always felt so lucky that anyone he felt was so far out of his league would even look at him, never mind marry him. It was just so unfair that her life had been cut short and he would never see the smile that could light up a room or feel her body against his ever again. With a tear running down his cheek, he got up and decided to go to bed. It was still early but he felt so desperate and could only hope that sleep would release him from his grief, at least for now. However, nothing could prepare him for the shock he was about to receive. Jack opened his bedroom door, turned the light on and froze. Ahead of him, unfolded on the bed were Pippa's black mini skirt and gray fluffy sweater. In front of the bed, on the floor were her boots. Jack had not felt ready to give Pippa's clothes away and the girls had obviously found them and got them ready for him to wear. So that's what they meant when they asked him if he would be mummy now. Jack gathered up the clothes and held them close to his face as he collapsed onto the bed and cried uncontrollably. Pippa's scent was still on the clothes and she'd looked so cute in that outfit. She'd called it her yummy mummy outfit and had always worn it, or something similar, when picking the girls up from school. Any hopes Jack had had to fall asleep quickly evaporated and, as he tossed and turned he'd remember another episode from his life with Pippa, sobbing uncontrollably as the memories played out in his mind. Somehow, he finally fell asleep and as he woke the following morning, he folded the clothes carefully and put them back in the drawer and started his normal morning routine to get the girls ready for school. That evening, the conversations of the day before seemed to have been forgotten. The girls played with their dolls and, during the meal, told Jack about the pictures they painted at school that day. At bedtime, he read them a story and, after kissing them goodnight and turning off the light, left the room, relieved that there had been no mention of him becoming mummy. His relief was short-lived though. As he turned on the bedroom light, the sweater and skirt were once again laid out on the bed with the boots on the floor in front. Like any devoted father, Jack wanted to do anything he could for his children. But the decision he was faced with now was far greater than just deciding whether or not to wear his late wife's clothes in front of his children. In fact, he knew that his wife would have told him to get on with it, to do anything in his power to please her children. But it wasn't that easy. Jack's thoughts turned back to something that had happened when he was fourteen. He'd always been fascinated by the girls in his class, trying to join their games when he was younger but now marveling at how the clothes they wore combined with the changes happening to their bodies made them so attractive. 
One day, he'd gone into his parents' bedroom and seeing a pair of tights on the floor, had tried them on. He'd become immediately aroused and removed them quickly and put them back before running to the bathroom to relieve himself. It was his first proper sexual experience and whilst, on the one hand, he was ashamed, on the other he wanted to repeat the experience and, in the months that followed, would sneak into his parents' bedroom whenever they were out to try on his mother's clothes gradually progressing from just the tights to being fully dressed. Then he became properly involved with Pippa and all thoughts of cross-dressing were well and truly buried. With Pippa giving him far more sexual stimulation than he'd ever got from cross-dressing, he'd presumed that the urges had gone for good and he'd been cured. In fact, he'd almost forgotten that side of his life but now, as he held the soft clothes and started to fold them, the memories were flooding back. It was not just a case of wearing his wife's clothes, it was the risk of becoming aroused in front of the girls while he was doing it and the risk that the long-buried urges would resurface. As he wrestled with the thoughts in his mind, he once again realized that tonight was going to be a long night. As he picked up the girls from school the following afternoon, Jack knew that he had to confront the issue with them. The thought of his daughter silently going into his room to spread out Pippa's clothes in the hope that he'd wear them was too much to bear. As they sat and ate their tea, Jack asked them, When you asked me if I will be mummy, what did you mean? We miss mummy and thought that, if you could be her, we could see her again, replied Sophie. And play with her, added Melissa. So you want me to put on her clothes and play with you? Will that make you happy? Yes, cried the girls together. Okay, you get the toys ready and I'll go and get changed, agreed Jack, still not sure that he was doing the right thing. Jack went to his bedroom and opened the drawer. After removing his shirt and jeans, he stepped into the skirt and put the sweater on before pulling on the boots, relieved that his similarity to Pippa also extended to their shoe size. As he stood in front of the mirror, he knew he looked nothing like Pippa but breathed a sigh of relief as he realized that despite the smoothness and softness of the clothes, they had not had the same effect as when he'd last worn female clothes thirteen years earlier. As Jack entered the lounge, a cry of, Mummy, went up from both girls. Hello, darlings, I've missed you. What would you like to play? asked Jack before kneeling on the floor and helping the girls dress their dolls. After an hour or so it was bedtime and, as Jack finished the story, Melissa turned to him and said, Mummy, why did you have your hair cut? We used to like your long hair. When you come and play tomorrow, will it have grown again? Jack's heart sank, this was not going to be the one-off game he'd hoped. We'll see, darling, he replied before leaving the room. The following afternoon, as they drove home from school, Sophie asked Jack whether Mummy would be playing with them that evening. Yes, if you want her to, he replied and, after they'd finished tea, he once again went to his bedroom to get changed, this time adding the wig which he'd bought on special offer from the local department store during the day and which was almost identical in color and style to Pippa's hair. Mummy, your hair grew back, squealed Melissa with delight as Jack settled down to play with them. For the next hour, the house was filled with joy and laughter as the three of them played together and Jack felt a tinge of disappointment as he realized it was time to get the girls to bed. Mummy, asked Sophie as Jack was turning out the light. Don't ladies have chests in heaven? Of course they do, replied Jack, what do you mean? You used to have such a big chest, explained Sophie but now it's gone. And your legs are hairier than they used to be, added Melissa helpfully. Jack laughed nervously as he closed the door, inwardly panicking. Up to now, he deliberately avoided anything overtly feminine for obvious reasons but now, if he was not going to disappoint the girls, he'd have to go through with it. The following evening, Jack had added a bra, filled out with a couple of rolled-up socks, and black opaque tights to his outfit. As he walked into the lounge, he was ordered to sit down. Tonight, mummy, we're going to do your makeup, declared Melissa. Yes, your lipstick used to look so pretty, added Sophie. And, as Jack sat on the floor, Melissa and Sophie set to work with some of Pippa's makeup that they'd found in the dressing table. There, you're finished and you look really beautiful, they declared as they led Jack to the mirror. As Jack looked at his reflection, he didn't know whether to laugh or cry. From the neck down, he looked okay but his makeover was to the standard achieved by five-year-olds the world over. 
After examining his lips, now looking twice as big as normal thanks to the liberal application of deep red lipstick, his red cheeks which had been rouged, using the same lipstick and his eyes enhanced, with bright blue eyeshadow, he turned to the girls oh thank you, he gushed. Mummy looks more beautiful than ever. The girls giggled and Jack thought that was a good enough time as any to get them to bed, particularly as he faced a mammoth cleanup operation to remove the makeup from both himself and the lounge carpet. Before starting the cleanup, Jack sat down with a cup of coffee. He started to realize the amount of joy he'd bought to the girls and, despite his misgivings and worries, he'd not had to contend with any of the sexual urges or arousal that he'd feared. Wearing the clothes just felt nice, not only because they had been Pippa's but also because there was something calming about their softness. As he looked down at the form of his sock-enhanced breasts and his legs framed by his skirt and boots and encased in black nylon, he realized that he was in no hurry to take the things off. He tucked his legs up by his side on the sofa and, as he gently stroked his leg enjoying the feel of the softness of his tights, closed his eyes. It was 7 a.m. the following morning before he woke up again, still wearing everything, including the makeup, from the night before. He rushed to the bathroom to clean up and change into his normal clothes before waking the girls up ready for school. As he drove back after dropping them off, Jack decided that tonight, he would make it extra special for the girls but try to call a halt to what had that week become a nightly ritual. On the drive home in the evening, Jack spoke to the girls. Tonight, mommy's going to make your tea and eat it with you. Would you like that? Yes, came the excited reply. As soon as they got home, Jack told the girls to play nicely before he went upstairs to his room to start getting changed. He opened the wardrobe door and there, hanging in front of him was Pippa's tailored navy blue dress, the one she'd always worn when she needed to look smart at work. He removed it from its hanger and, after putting on the various items of underwear, stepped into the dress and, after a slight struggle, managed to zip it up at the back. He sat down in front of the dressing table mirror, he had no hope of getting anywhere close to Pippa's skills with makeup but, providing he kept it simple, he'd probably look okay. Twenty minutes later, he'd applied a layer of foundation, eyeliner, mascara, blusher and Pippa's favorite shade of deep red lipstick. He put the wig on followed by a necklace and some bracelets and walked over to the wardrobe once more. He removed Pippa's high-heeled shoes from their shelf and slipped one foot and then the other into them before stepping back to look in the mirror. As he looked in the mirror, he knew that he was fooling no one. Whilst his makeup skills were better than those of his daughters, there was no mistaking that it was his face looking back at him. However, with his deep red lipstick and darkened eyes, his face had taken on a more feminine appearance and, as he looked at his outfit, he could see that the cut of the dress made it look as if he had hips and his legs certainly looked good in the tights and three-inch heels. More than anything, though, the clothes felt fantastic and, as he sat on the edge of the bed and crossed his legs, he couldn't help feeling a tinge of envy at all the women who got to wear, or rather experience, these clothes every day. Still, there was food to be prepared and, as he walked slightly unsteadily on the heels into the lounge, the girl's jaws dropped. Oh mummy, you look so beautiful, they cried. Thank you my darlings, smiled Jack, let's go and make tea together. Jack and the girls went into the kitchen and were soon sitting down to enjoy the beans on toast they'd made together. When they'd finished, Jack looked at the girls and spoke my darlings. You know how much mummy loves being with you? They both nodded. Jack continued, Well I know that daddy is starting to miss playing with you so how would it be if I only came to see you from time to time but daddy looked after you otherwise? It's okay, they replied, a little disappointed. I tell you what. Why don't you tell daddy when you want me to come but, otherwise, I'll stay in heaven to keep an eye on the three of you. Is that a deal? It's a deal they shouted. That's great. Before I go, let's go and play. And play they did, with laughter and squeals of joy once again filling the house. It was well after their normal bedtime when Jack was finally turning off the light, exhausted but relieved that he was finally off the hook from getting dressed up each night. Except. As Jack flopped down into the chair, he once again glanced down for one last look at himself before he reverted to his male clothes. His reaction surprised him. He didn't feel aroused as he had done as a teenager. 
He didn't feel disgusted with himself for wearing his late wife's clothes. He just felt calm, not only calmer than he'd felt at any time since Pippa's death but a serene calm that he'd never felt before as if everything in his life was properly aligned. This can't be wrong if it feels so right, he repeated over and over to himself as he ran his hand over the soft fabrics of his clothes. He placed his hands on his breasts and imagined that they were not socks but real breasts. He moved his hand to his genital area, he'd made sure he was well tucked when he put the clothes on several hours earlier and, as he stroked the area, pushing his dress down into the gap between his legs, the absence of what was normally there aroused him. Not the sexual arousal that he'd expected but a sensual, all-over tingle, the like of which he'd never experienced before. He got up out of the chair to go to his bedroom to change. As he walked, he felt his legs slide smoothly against each other and against the silky lining of the dress. He smiled to himself as his heels made a click-clack sound on the hall floor and, as he climbed the stairs, he was aware of the way that the hem of the dress strained with every step. He took one last look at himself in the mirror before he started to remove the clothes and makeup, putting everything neatly away as Pippo would have done, secretly hoping that it was not too long before the girls asked to see Mummy once more. It was now six months since Pippa's death. The girls were, for the most part, very happy to play with Jack and it was only every few weeks that they asked him if Mummy could come to play. Jack always agreed, not only because of how happy it made the girls but also as it gave him the opportunity to rediscover his feminine side. Whilst he felt very comfortable and femme, he was very careful not to indulge unless the girls had specifically asked to avoid any awkward problems if they discovered him fully dressed out of the blue. As the twins' sixth birthday was approaching, Jack decided to ask the girls what they'd like as a present. That's easy. We want Mummy to pick us up from school. Jack froze. It was one thing playing the game in the privacy of their own home but another thing entirely to play it out in front of the whole world. I don't think she can do that. But she can come for your birthday tea, though. The girls looked crushed. Please, Daddy. All of our friends get picked up by their mummies so we want to too. Jack was frantically thinking how to handle this when the phone rang. He answered it and it was his younger sister. Jack's heart sank. The only time she ever phoned was when she was having a crisis with men, money or both and, as she launched into her latest sorry saga, Jack knew that this was not going to be a quick call. One hour later, she'd finally run out of steam and Jack put the phone down before going back to the lounge and telling the girls it was time for bed. The birthday wasn't mentioned again and Jack soon forgot about their request. The following week, Melissa and Sophie were invited to a play date at their friend Freya's house after school. Emily, Freya's mother, had kindly offered to bring them home afterwards. As Jack answered the door, Melissa and Sophie ran in and Jack thanked Emily for having them. Emily looked serious. Jack. Melissa and Sophie said that their mother is going to pick them up from school on their birthday next week. I gently asked them if they were sure it was their mother that was coming and they replied that they were certain it was and she sometimes came to play. What's going on? Emily, her husband David and Freya lived in the house opposite Jack's. Emily had been very close to Pippa before her death and whilst she'd given nothing but support to Jackson's, he was always a little wary of her. Emily's mouth seemed to be connected directly to her brain with no filters in between and whatever she was thinking she said. You'd better come in, replied Jack knowing by the look on Emily's face that he was in for a hard time. Jack showed Emily into the lounge and made her a coffee while he put the twins to bed. He then returned and sat down opposite her and told her everything how they'd asked if he could be their mother, how he'd found the clothes they'd set out for him and succumbed to their pleas, how they sometimes asked for her to come and play and how they'd now asked for her to pick them up from school on their birthday. Emily listened with her mouth open. When Jack finished, she spoke, well, Jack, if I'm honest, you definitely didn't handle this very well. Putting on Pippa's clothes and pretending to be her definitely isn't going to help them get over their grief. What on earth were you thinking? I don't know, stuttered Jack. I just wanted to make their wish come true I suppose. It breaks my heart to see them without a mother. Okay, I understand that, replied Emily, her voice starting to soften. Anyway, whatever the rights and wrongs of what you've done are, you do seem to have got yourself into rather a pickle, don't you? 
Jack nodded. But what should I do? You've got two choices. Go along with it or say no to them. What do you want to do? She inquired firmly. Every fiber of Jack's body was telling him that he should sit his daughters down and say no but, in his heart, he couldn't bear to let the girls down. Three times, he opened his mouth to say that he should refuse their request but each time, no sound came out. In the end, he just closed his eyes, took a deep breath and said, I've got to go along with it. I have no other option. Wrong answer, but if that's what you want to do then so be it, replied Emily with more than a hint of exasperation in her voice. You're going to need a lot of help though. The twins, birthday is next Wednesday, isn't it? Come over to mine at lunchtime with whatever clothes you want to wear and leave the rest to me. As Jack showed Emily to the door, he expressed his gratitude. Thanks Emily, I owe you one. Oh, you owe me far more than one, Jack. She laughed, see you on Wednesday. The following Wednesday, Jack arrived at Emily's at 12.30 as agreed. Emily invited him into the kitchen and, as they ate lunch, she explained the arrangements to him. Okay, everything's arranged, she started, the other mothers in my little group all know the score and they're all supportive so you don't need to worry about any hostility from any of them. We'll be standing at the edge of the playground so none of the other parents should notice you and, if they do twig what's going on, so what? This is the 21st century. Jack laughed nervously and Emily continued. When we've picked up the children, we'll all come back here. It'd be such a shame for you to be all dressed up with nowhere to go so we'll have a little party for the girls. I've got them a cake if you don't mind. Jack smiled and thanked her. Anyway. That's the easy part. The difficult part is you. We've now got two hours to transform you into a convincing woman so we need to make a start. Go into the bathroom and have a shave, as close as possible. You'll find a razor and shaving foam in there and don't forget your arms, legs and chest. When you've finished, put on the dressing gown hanging on the door and come to the bedroom with your clothes. Twenty minutes later, Jack had finished and was standing in front of Emily wearing just the dressing gown. Emily scrutinized him to make sure there were no errant hairs showing. Okay, good enough. Now sit down on the side of the bed. Jack did as he was told and Emily started to apply makeup. Jack watched her progress in the mirror as slowly his male persona vanished and a not unattractive female started to emerge in its place. After a final application of deep red lipstick, Emily had finished and left the room while Jack put on the clothes. He'd gone for the outfit first picked out by the twins months before, firstly as it was what Pippa had normally worn when collecting the girls and secondly as it wouldn't draw too much attention to him. As he pulled the boots on and stood up, Emily looked at him. Not bad, nice outfit, she said before adding, let's get the wig on to finish it off. Emily helped Jack put on the wig and spent a few moments making sure it sat properly and looked natural. She then stepped back to check her handiwork, nodded approvingly and then told Jack to turn round and look in the mirror. As Jack saw his reflection, he was shocked. It was almost as if his face had been reshaped and he now bore more than a passing resemblance to Pippa. How did you do it? He gasped. There are tricks with makeup we can use to make noses and chins look smaller, and to highlight other feminine features such as cheekbones. I've had to use every trick in the book and a few more as well today, she laughed, anyway, it's getting late and it's time we went to collect our children. As they walked to the door, Emily remembered one more thing. While we're out, the other mothers and I will call you Jackie. I know that the twins will probably call you mummy but I think there are boundaries here and calling you Pippo would just not be appropriate. Jack agreed. By this time, he was shaking with nerves but, as he stepped out of the house, he felt the elation of being outside, dressed, for the first time. Remember you're a woman now so don't walk like a man, hissed Emily, watch how I walk and copy it. Remember, shoulders back, no slouching, chest out, small steps, one foot in front of the other. If you feel like a woman, and carry yourself like a woman, others will perceive you as one. Jack did his best to comply but as they turned the corner and saw the school ahead, his heart started racing and he hesitated. Too late to turn back now. Come on, encouraged Emily and, as they walked through the school gates they saw a group of familiar faces ahead. 
Girls, this is Jackie, she said introducing Jack's new identity to her friends. There was a short, uneasy, pause as the assembled group took in the sight of Jack, now transformed into Jackie, standing in front of them. After what seemed like an age but was, in fact only a few seconds, one of the other mothers spoke. Jackie, I love your outfit. So perfect for the school run. And that was the catalyst that was needed. Soon they were all chatting like old friends and what struck Jack was how, as a guy, he'd stood on his own in the playground, day after day, with no one speaking to him and yet here he was now, one of the girls. Soon the school doors opened and hordes of excited children flooded out. Jack scanned the playground for the twins and then, all of a sudden, heard Mummy. You came. The girls ran towards him and hugged his legs tight. When they finally released their grip, Jack bent down and kissed both of them. I wouldn't have missed this for anything, said Jack wiping away a tear. And then, taking one girl in each hand, continued, Come on, we're all going to Freya's for tea. The atmosphere in Emily's house was chaotic. Ten hyperactive children, overdosed on sugar, rushing around and five frazzled mothers plus Jack finally admitting defeat and retiring to the dining room for peace and quiet. Jack had been concerned whether he'd be able to participate in the conversations but he needn't have worried. The pressures he felt as a single father were exactly the same as for all of the mothers and he was soon completely at ease discussing all aspects of childcare including education, discipline and how to stop their kids spending too long on iPads and smartphones and play in the fresh air. If any of the mothers felt uneasy having a cross-dressed man in their midst, they certainly didn't show it. As Emily walked into the room with a tray of coffees for everyone she stopped for a moment. Ahead of her was a perfectly natural scene a group of mothers getting together for a chat. She looked over at Jack who now seemed to be perfectly at home in his Jackie persona. Even his mannerisms seemed to have become more feminine as he chatted easily to the others. As seven o'clock approached, the mothers started to collect up their children and make their way home. Jack took the cue as time to leave but, as he stood up, Emily spoke oh, Jackie, could you hang around for a few minutes? There's something I want to talk to you about when the others have gone. Jack sat down again and, ten minutes later, Emily joined him at the dining table having said goodbye to the final guest. What is it? Jack inquired. I just wanted to say how proud of you I felt this afternoon. As you know, I completely disagreed with your decision but you really pulled it off and I know the girls will always love you for it. Thank you, smiled Jack. But, Jackie, I think there's far more to you than meets the eye, she continued with a knowing smile. What do you mean, asked Jack, a little puzzled by her comment. Well let's just say that if my David had to do what you've done today, he'd have complained like hell and, if he hadn't run a mile at the prospect, would have stuck out like a sore thumb. You just fit it in as if this was all normal to you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I get the feeling you rather enjoyed yourself and wouldn't mind doing it again. Am I right, Jackie? Jack blushed and looked down. I thought so, laughed Emily rather pleased with her deductive powers anyway, we've got a girls, trip to the theater next Friday and Julie's had to back out so we've got a spare ticket if you're interested. David can bring Freya over to yours to babysit while we're out and I'll help you get ready here. Is that a date then? Jack looked back up, smiled and thanked Emily. Excellent, Jackie. Oh, and you'll need to dress to impress, you'll have a lot of competition from the rest of us and we can't have you letting the side down. Jack laughed. He knew exactly what he was going to wear and was sure that, with Emily's help, he'd be a knockout. The following Friday, Jack, or rather Jackie, stepped out with Emily and the other mothers. With Emily's makeup skills and Pippa's navy blue dress and heels, Jackie did indeed look a knockout and noticed a couple of envious glances from the others whose dresses were not quite as figure-hugging and heels not quite as high. But that wasn't all. Invitations to go out with the mothers became more and more frequent, as did Melissa and Sophie's requests for their mother to come and play and Jack always complied. What struck Jack more than anything was that, when he was dressed as Pippa, there was more laughter in the house and he seemed to be able to more closely connect with the girls. The nights out with the mothers just felt like the most natural thing in the world and it was becoming obvious that he was living for the times he could become Jackie while the male side of his life was becoming less and less relevant.
It therefore came as no surprise to Emily when Jack stopped her in the school playground and asked if she'd mind coming round for a chat as he needed her advice on something. She smiled as she knew exactly what source of advice he would be seeking. The following day, Jack picked up the girls from school and took them home. As they entered the house, he told them there was something he needed to talk to them about. They all went into the lounge and sat down. Jack started to speak. You know how much I loved your mother and how much I miss her and I know how much you loved her and how much you miss her too. Last year, you asked me if I could be mummy and got me to dress up as her to play with you. Doing that has made me realize how hard she used to work to make all of us happy and how much fun it is to be a mummy. I know that you enjoyed those games and I did too but we now have to accept that mummy has gone and no one can ever replace her. The girls started to cry. Does this mean we'll never get to play with her again? Well, there's this lady I know called Jackie. She looks the same as your mummy does when she comes to play with you and she'll play the same games with you only much more often every night if you want. In fact, you won't be able to tell the difference. The girls looked puzzled. Who is she? They asked. Before I tell you, I need to explain something for you. When we're born, we're either a baby boy or a baby girl. The only way the doctors can tell is by looking at the baby. Yes. We didn't have willies so we're girls, the twins excitedly interrupted, shocking Jack with their comment. If only he'd chosen his words more carefully when they'd first asked him about the difference between boys and girls several years earlier. Yes, that's not quite how I would have said it but you're correct. The problem is that sometimes nature gets things a bit wrong and a baby that looks like a boy is really a girl. The girls looked puzzled again. How can a baby that looks like a boy be a girl? They asked it sort of like they only had a girl's brain spare when they were making a little boy. They put the brain in anyway and it seemed to work okay to everyone else but the brain knows that it's in the wrong body. That's awful, observed Melissa. Do they have to swap the brain over? No. It's not that easy because your brain is who you are, replied Jack. If I swapped your brain with Sophie's, you'd still be Melissa but in her body. So what do they do then, inquired Sophie. There are clever doctors that can help change the body so it looks more like the brain thinks it should. It's still the same person but they just look a little different. So a man has a bigger chest and no willy? Basically yes but remember, it's not really a man but a woman inside so. After the doctors have mended her, her body will look like her brain always thought it should. I see, said Melissa who thought for a moment before adding, so does that mean that you have a girl's brain? Jack took a deep breath. Yes it does but I didn't really realize it until you asked me to be mummy. I now know that I'm going to feel much happier if I have my body corrected and, if I'm happier, I think you will be too. Sophie looks sad but does that mean you won't be our daddy anymore? Jack smiled no, I'll always be your daddy. I'm just going to look a little different, wear different clothes and have a different name. I'm going to be called Jackie from now on. Sophie brightened up. So we're sort of going to have a daddy and a mummy, all rolled into one. Yes my darlings, that's exactly what you're going to have. But what should we call you? asked Melissa looking concerned. You can call me whatever you want. Daddy? Jackie or something else. It's up to you. Sophie and Melissa whispered to each other for a minute or two. What about Maddie? They asked. Maddie, that's a strange name, replied Jack, a little puzzled. Yes, it's a mixture of mummy and daddy which is what you're going to be. Oh wow, that's a great name. Do you have anything else you want to ask me? When are you going to start being a girl? Asked Sophie. Whenever you want. Would you like me to start now? Sophie smiled and nodded. Then Melissa spoke. Maddie, can we go to McDonald's to celebrate? Of course we can but now I'm a girl, I don't think I should be wearing clothes like this anymore. Would you like to come up with me and help me choose an outfit? Half an hour later, they were walking down their drive, hand in hand on their way to McDonald's. Emily saw them from her lounge window waved and ran over to see them. Well Jackie, it looks like tonight went well. I'm proud of you, she enthused and then, looking down at the twins, added, and are you girls happy that Jackie's here for good? Maddie, you mean. 
It's short for mummy and daddy, corrected Melissa, her and Sophie's smiles telling Emily everything else she needed to know. Jackie turned to Emily. Emily, thank you so much for everything you've done, particularly your advice yesterday evening. The whole thing went like a dream as you can see. It's what girlfriends do, laughed Emily, you'll soon learn. Anyway, enjoy your evening out. I guess you're all off to celebrate. I don't think McDonald's does champagne but we'll do our best, giggled Jackie before thanking Emily once again. As Jackie and her daughters walked down the road, she looked up to the stars. She still missed Pippa as much as ever but maybe her death hadn't been in vain after all. Pippa would surely be surprised at how things turned out. She may also have been a little upset that Jack had kept his secret from her but, if she was looking down on her little family as they walked happily down the road, laughing and joking as they went, maybe, just maybe, she would be very happy at how well things seemed to have turned out.